Hello and welcome to this video on position sizing, money management, and when to take profits. I sincerely believe money and risk management are the single most important part of investing and most people get it wrong. If you do not know how to properly manage your positions and risk, you can end up taking trades that are too large for your account and just a few bad investments can wipe you out. Did you know if you take a 50% loss that it takes a 100% gain just to get back to break even? And if you take a 60% loss, it takes a whopping 150% gain for break even. That's scary and I know most of you have been bag holders with huge losses, but don't worry because today we're going to make it easy to learn how to manage your risk, how many shares to buy, how big your total position should be, how to set realistic profit expectations, and when to take your losses. Today's video will be broken into four sections with each section building on the previous one, so be sure to watch the entire video. Our four sections are number one, position sizing based on exposure per trade. Number two, the risk per trade approach. This is also known as the 2% rule. Number three, the risk per trade approach with stock volatility. And number four, how to instantly automate risk management to determine the perfect trade size for each investment. All right, let's get started. Number one, position sizing based on exposure per trade is the most common and basic approach to investing and is based on the size of the overall portfolio. For example, many ETFs and indexes will limit their exposure per stock to 10% or less of the total portfolio. An example of this are the ARK ETFs by Kathy Wood where no position they hold is more than 10% of the ETF's overall exposure. For example, in the ARK Innovation ETF, the largest holding is Tesla coming in at 10.65%. Step number one, we want to determine your total investment capital, which is equal to the total stock value plus cash. And total investment capital is also referred to as your net liquidation value. And this is a number that you'll commonly see in trading systems like Thinkorswim. Let's suppose you have $10,000 of investment capital and want to buy a $100 stock. The formulas you need are the position size equals the investment capital, which would be $10,000 times the exposure percentage. And the second formula is the shares to buy is equal to the position size divided by the stock price. And our exposure per trade formula is the account size, which is $10,000 times the exposure percentage divided by the stock price, which is $100. So a few examples, if we wanted 10% exposure, that would be $10,000 times 10% for a $1,000 position size, and you would buy 10 shares. For 5% exposure, that would be $10,000 times 5% for a $500 position size, and you would buy five shares. For 2% exposure, it would be $10,000 $1,000 times 2% for a $200 position size and you would buy two shares. Our pros, this controls risk exposure. The lower the risk, the more losses you can take. It's easy to calculate and it's easy to know how much you are risking per trade. Our cons, this does not take into account stock volatility and I believe it is oversimplified. When do we want to use position sizing based on the exposure per trade? This approach is better than not having any approach at all and it could be used by a passive investor to equally distribute risk between a number of stocks. The simplest application of this approach would be if you have $10,000 of investment capital is to buy 10 different stocks with a value of approximately $1,000 each. Number two is our risk per trade approach, how to calculate our account risk based on the 2% rule. The 2% rule is a restriction that investors impose on their trading activities in order to stay within specified risk management parameters. Your risk per trade is the part of your trading system that determines how much of your account that you are willing to risk on any given trade. The typical risk per trade is one to 3% and will vary from investor to investor. Step one, determine your total investment capital. The formula is total investment capital equals your total stock value plus the cash you have on hand. Step number two, determine the max dollar risk per trade. This is also known as the 2% rule. And this doesn't mean that if you have a $50,000 trading account, you can only buy $1,000 worth of stock, which would be 2% of $50,000. You can use all of your capital on a single trade or even more if you utilize leverage. Implementing the 2% risk rule means you take risk management steps so that you prevent prevent losses of more than 2% on any single given trade. As a rule of thumb, most retail investors risk no more than 2% of their capital on any one trade and traders of large accounts and fund managers usually risk less. In our example today, we will use 2% to determine the maximum risk per trade. So our maximum dollar risk per trade would be $200 and we get that by taking our total investment capital, which is $10,000 and multiplying it by the percent rule, which is 2%. For example, if you have a $10,000 account for investing and your maximum account risk is 2%, then you cannot risk more than $200 per trade. This means even if you have 10 consecutive losing trades, your losses will be limited to 20% of your investment capital. 
Investors with trading accounts of less than $100,000 commonly use the 1 to 2% rule. For accounts over $100,000, many investors like myself risk less than 1% and larger accounts will risk even less. Step number three, determine your trade risk per share. This is also known as your dollar stop loss. The investor must determine where to place their stop loss order for the specific trade. If the investor is trading stocks, the trade risk is the distance in dollars between the intended entry price and the stop loss price. For example, if an investor intends to purchase Ford at $12 and place a stop loss order at $10.50, the trade risk is $1.50 per share. Step number four, determine the proper position size. Suppose the investor wants to buy Ford using the 2% rule. The investor now knows that they can risk $200 per trade and they are risking $1.50 per share. To work out the correct position size from this information, the investor simply needs to divide the account risk, which is $200, by the trade risk, which is $1.50. This means 133 shares can be bought. Our three formulas are the max risk per trade equals the total investment capital, which was $10,000 times 2% for a $200 max risk per trade. Number of shares to buy is equal to the maximum risk per trade, $200, divided by the dollar stop loss, $1.50, for a total of 133 shares. And the complete formula is the total investment capital of $10,000 times 2% divided by the stop loss of $1.50 per share. The total position size value is simply the 133 shares multiplied by the share price of $12 for a total position value of $1,596. Our pros are, this limits the risk on any given trade to no more than 2% of a trader's total account value. You can withstand a long string of losses. Whatever you risk, 2%, your goal should be 1.5 to two times the risk. You have tight risk and money management on your account, and this is what I call a professional investor approach. Our cons are, this feels restrictive. Most investors are not used to investing with strict money management. In the beginning, the 2% rule feels overly limiting and forces smaller trade sizes than people are used to. Stock volatility is not taken into account. For example, growth stocks have a high volatility where non-volatile stocks like Coca-Cola or Berkshire Hathaway do not. When to use the risk per trade approach. There's an expression for stock investors. There are bold investors and there are old investors, but there are no bold old investors. Most investors will benefit from following a money and risk management system. While there are exceptions to the rule, it probably isn't you unless you're successfully trading seven figure accounts. And number three, we'll call this Jerry's risk per trade approach with stock volatility. And I'm excited to show this to you and stick around to the very end to see the one click and done solution. All right, by adding the stock volatility to the equation, we can establish our position size based on the 2% rule and the stock's individual volatility. Step number one, determine the average true range as a percentage of the stock's price. The ATR is a technical analysis and volatility indicator that determines an absolute value of a stock's true range over a given period of time. If you wanna know how to determine the ATR, just Google it and know that most investors and I use a 14-day period in the computation. Step number two, determine a trail stop percentage based on the ATR percentage. Most investors using the ATR approach to determine a trail stop will use a multiplier of two to three. We will split the difference and use an ATR multiplier of 2.5. So our trail stop formula is equal to the ATR percentage times 2.5. For example, if your ATR percentage is three, your multiplier would be 2.5 and your trail stop percentage would be 7.5%. If the ATR percentage is four, your trail stop would be 10%. If it's five, it would be 12.5%. And if it's six, your trail stop would be 15%. The higher the trail stop, the higher the volatility, and the higher the volatility, the higher the risk. Therefore, with high volatility, we wanna manage our risk by trading smaller position sizes. Step number three, we determine the risk per share, and in this case, it would be $1, and we get that by taking the stock price of $20 and multiplying it by the trail stop of 5%. Step number four, determine the proper position size. Suppose the investor wants to buy American Airlines ticker AAL using the 2% rule and a 5% trail stop. The investor knows that they can still risk $200 per trade and the trail stop will be 5%, which is a risk per share of $1. To work out the correct position size from this information, the investor simply needs to divide the account risk, which is $2, by the trade risk, which is $1. This means 200 shares can be bought. So the complete formula is the total investment capital of $10,000 times 2% divided by the risk per share, which is $1 per share. The total position size equals the 200 shares multiplied by the share price of $20 for a total position value of $4,000. 
And step number five, let's add a profit target using a risk reward ratio of two. The risk reward ratio measures the potential profit for every dollar risk. It is the ratio between the value at risk and the profit target. For example, if you buy a stock for $10 with a profit target of $12 and set the stop loss at $9, the risk reward ratio is one to two because you're risking $1 to make $2. Our risk is $1 and our reward is $2, which we will call our profit per share. Here are the two formulas we need to know. The profit per share of $2 is equal to the risk per share, which is $1 times the reward of $2. Our target price of $22 equals our stock price of $20 plus two times our risk per share, which is $1. Here's a trade example if you wanna test your math skills. Total investment capital is $10,000. A stock's trading price is $20. The trade risk percentage is 2% or $200 per trade. And this is not to be confused with the trail stop. Our trail stop would be 5% or $1, which is the most you are willing to lose per share. The maximum number of shares to buy would be $200. Our position value would be $4,000. Our profit per share target is $2. And the stock target price is $22. This means out of your $10,000 of capital, we are using $4,000 to buy the stock and our total risk is $200, which is 2% of our $10,000 account size. Your risk is not $4,000, it's only $200 because of the 5% trail stop. Our pros for this approach, all of the same pros from the 2% rule, plus we are now basing our position size on the stock's volatility. This is a game changer for risk management. The cons are you have to do the math and most people won't. The good news is I have 100% free risk management tools at jerryromine.com to help you make this easy, so be sure to check that out. Now let's take things to the next level and number four, I'm gonna show you how to instantly automate risk management to determine the perfect trade size for each investment. Let's jump into Thinkorswim and this is where it gets fun. We're now looking at my risk management indicator, which is this gray bar right here, as well as this orange one, and it does everything automatically that we just covered. We're looking at the stock life storage, which is ticker LSI, and let's go through the different parts. For starters, we've got an account size of $25,000, and we can set this size with one of our settings, and in just a second, I'll show you how we can also pull up our actual TOS account. We've got a maximum position size set to 5%, which would be $1,250 under those parameters we would buy 10 shares and our risk would be $44 and that's based on a trail stop of 4% or if we wanted to follow the 2% rule we could buy 114 shares for a total price of $14,168 and our risk would be $502 and then we just restate the trail stop that we're using is 4% and this is what I call the magic question so anytime you're looking to buy a stock all you have to do is ask yourself this question. Will I risk $44 to buy 10 shares for $1,243? My target price is $133.08. Our stock right now is trading at $124.28. So we've got a target price of $133.08. Our risk to reward ratio is two and our profit per share would be $880. So if we come over and look at our stock, we can see that it hit a high yesterday of $124.39. And if our target price is $133.08, that would be right up here at about this amount. And we can see based on its current trajectory, that is definitely a possibility. Now let's jump into the indicator settings and I'll show you how you can customize this to fit your exact need. So we come over here in TOS, we click on this beaker right here. We're gonna come down to Jerry Romine Risk Management and we click on the settings button. And here we've got, we wanna show the label for our TOS account. We can switch that to yes. Show the question on the TOS account. That is this question right here. We could add that as a yes show the TOS account size, we'll click yes, show the profit per share, show the risk reward ratio, that's our little RR right over here. And then we've got our adjustment. So let's say instead of doing a 5% max risk per trade, we wanted to change that to 10%. We just come over here, change it to 10%. Our percent rule, instead of using 2%, we wanna go more conservative. We could set that at 1%. And our risk reward ratio, let's change that from two down to 1.5. And we're gonna notice a lot of things are all going to automatically change on this risk management bar. So now all I do is hit the OK button. I hit the apply button and I hit OK again. And now we can see quite a few things have changed. For starters, we've got my personal account right now. This is my Roth IRA. It has $99,194 in it. If we follow the max 10% rule, my max position size would be $9,919. I could buy 80 shares. My 
risk would be 352, or if I want to follow the 1% rule, I could buy 225 shares for a total of $27,963. My risk would be $990, and again, the trail stop is 4%, which we can see right here as well. If we come over, the question that we want to ask is, will I risk $352 and buy 80 shares for $9,942? My target price is $130.88. My risk to reward ratio is 1.5, and my profit per share would be $6.60. Then we also have the default account where we set the account size. That's $25,000, and you'll see these values changed as well, as did the question. So the question is, when do you want to use each of these? Most people using this will set the personal account size. So if we wanted to turn off our account size right here where we set up that amount, we just come over here, hit the beacon, click on our settings, and then we would scroll down to the bottom. And this is if you don't have a TOS account. For example, a lot of my patrons, they don't use a TOS account for their main trading. They may Schwab or a different account, but they still want to run the numbers. So they would want to turn these two on down here. And this is where you set your account size. Now, just to show you how easy it is to use this indicator, let's go through a few stocks and I've reset things back to where we're using the 2% rule and we've got a risk reward ratio of two. So we're now looking at Apple. It's trading at $153.12. Let's assume that we wanted to buy this stock. So if we're looking at my actual account here, we've got my total account size. If I wanted to buy 5%, I would buy $4,960, which would be 32 shares. And this is the key. I'm risking $209 or if I just wanted to follow the 2% rule, I would buy 304 shares. That would be the total price, risking $1,982, and this is based on a 4% trail stop. So here my key question is, will I risk $209 and buy 32 shares for $4,900? My target price is $166.17, currently trading at $153.12. That's reasonable. My risk to reward ratio is two, and my profit per share would be $1,305. And then the bottom number is, if you had an account of $25,000, thousand dollars. These are your same numbers and you can run that as well. All right, let's assume that you want to buy Facebook. It's currently trading at $380.66 and your account size is $25,000. Your maximum position would be $1,250. In this case, you would buy three shares risking $55 or your 2% rule, you would buy 27 shares. Total size would be $10,278. Your risk would be $498. Your trail stop is 5%. So here's our golden question. Will I risk $55 and buy three shares for $1,142? My target price is $417.57. My risk reward is two and my profit per share would be $36.91. Have you guys ever seen anything that makes the risk management and profit management easier than this? And it's completely customizable based on what you set your parameters to be. Next up, you've got INMD. You like the stock. The question you ask is, will I risk $121 and buy nine shares for $1,197? Here is that information. Boom. Instant decision super easy. We can also see that our volume is up 25% and we're basing our numbers on a trail stop of 10% risk reward ratio of two. We're now looking at the ARK ETF, A-R-K-K, -K, and let me show you the new addition on our TOS bar. And you can see right here that I own $8,473 worth of the ARKK stock that represents 69 shares and it's 8.5% of this current portfolio, which is 99,190. My profit or loss on this position is $2,462 and that is 41%. Now, if I wanted to buy more, we're right back here on our risk management indicator. We've got all of our data right here. And our quick question, if we want to follow the 5% rule is, will I risk 296 and buy 40 shares for $4,912? My target price would be $137.61. For Tesla, I probably don't want to buy any more in this account because I currently own $43,850. $55. That represents 60 shares and that represents 44.21% for this portfolio. And this is my Roth IRA portfolio that I'm holding for the long term. My current profit or loss on this position is $20,174, which is an 85.2% profit. Not too shabby. And if I'm looking to buy more, will I risk $375 and buy seven shares for $5,116? And our target price based on today's stock price would be $838.05. 
And for our last one today, I've set the account size to $13,000. We're looking at JYNT, which is Joint Corporation, and our maximum size of 5% would be $650. We would buy six, risk $70, or on the 2% rule, we could buy 22, which would be $2,244. Our risk in that case would be $258. This is based on a trail stop of 11%. Our golden question is, will I risk $70 and buy six shares for $612? The target price would be 125.46. Our risk to reward ratio is two and our profit per share would be $23.46. I really think that I've boiled all of the risk management, profit taking, and setting your trail stops down to a science with this one indicator. Let me know what you guys think of it down below. Our key takeaways today. Number one, risk management is an essential part of your trading plan. Number two, avoid trades with bad risk reward ratio. Swing and long-term traders should be 1.5 to two risk reward ratio or higher. Number three, you wanna know your stop loss and profit targets. And number four, always, always, always have a trading plan. Thank you for watching and if you enjoyed my video, all I ask in return is that you hit the like and subscribe button and you're welcome to use my free risk management tools at jerryromine.com or if you like my indicators, check out my Patreon. Peace and I'll see you on the next video.